so grateful that some of our students, graduates of our program, have come. We're going to have the group of them come in a minute, but we have one of them that has a previous appointment. So, Dejan, while Rob's getting you a microphone. Yeah, you better introduce who we are. This yes. is Rob and Debbie Purvis. <laughs> so, does welcome, it, welcome. It doesn't Chris really family. matter. We just yeah. want to make sure you know who okay. these guys are here. Yeah, and we, we made sure to tell them they can't be telling tales out of school on us. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, Dijon's going to be brave enough to be up here by himself, and I'm going to let Rob come over here and kind of get him started here. He's got a pressing engagement with his son, so he's got to take off right away. So uh, he he doesn't get the benefit of the of the ramp up <laughs> that uh, the other guys are going to have. Excuse me. So, let you so. go ahead and share what uh, reignite hope meant to you. Well, first of all, let's see. He's got a gray one. microphone on. There they go. They turn. Uh, testing, testing. All right. Well, first of all, my name is Dejan Aguayo. Um, I've recently graduated from Reignited Hope with Deb and Rob. And coming into the um, coming into the program, you know, I was at a time where I I wanted change in my life. So before me, I had a, a relative that went through the program. And she kind of explained to me that this might be the change that you're looking for. So when I came, did the orientation, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I just came there to come and I kept an open mind. But as, the, as we got our starting date and, you know, we got to, well, really got to the welding part, I started to see, like, this is a a trade that not only you can learn but you will learn to love it too like it's it's pretty easy well not everyone i'm not going not, not everyone is easy but the more and more that rob was teaching us it just made me appreciate having an open mind to even come to the program because before this I wasn't thinking about you know a trade or you know things like that I was I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do but as he was teaching me it just made me appreciate him it made me appreciate that they feed you good <laughs> That's a big plus. <laughs> you, got, you got to do that. <laughs> they feed you real good. But then, yeah, I, I kind of found my niche when I, I got on the MIG station. Like, that was, to me, the easiest thing for me. Like, I started off on stick. Stick actually taught me how to follow the bubble. It's the welding bubble, if I know anybody knows. It, it taught me how to follow it the proper way. So. I enjoy doing MIG, and it's another one called Dual Shield Flux. And to me, it's almost the same as MIG, but just thicker, you know, thicker beads. So throughout my experience, you know, I gained friends. I gained yep. lifetime friends with, you know, Mr. Purvis and Mrs. Purvis. And my kids got to see me graduate. You know, that was, that felt real good. It was real heartwarming. My, my girl, her, her mom, my mom, my dad, it was just a, a beautiful experience. And me being a graduate from it, if anybody is lost, you know, in the world, I mean, I don't know how long the program is gonna continue to run, but this is a great opportunity because after this, well, without this opportunity, I would have never got the paper that they gave me. They gave me a walk-in paper for the job that I'm currently at. So to me, I looked at it like it was a blessing. So I'm just very appreciative and I, I wanna thank Mr. And, Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Purvis once again. They're gonna forever be in my heart. You know, I had a, my son has a boxing match, so I have to leave, but I had to show up for Mr. Purvis. <laughs> So before he takes off, I know he's under a time crunch here, but I have to point out that uh, every morning, once we got the trailer opened up and everything ready for business, we would generally have a little bit of staff 
a devotional together. And Dijon was always early. And so he always came and joined in the staff devotional. And I said, you, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. But he stayed for every single one of them. So this guy was a blessing. And we're just delighted that he was able to find employment fairly quickly. And uh, with that, Dijon, we're going to say thank you and let you get on your way. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I hope the boy does good, man. Thank you. Right. Yeah. you too. All right, we'll see you. Thank you, Dijon. So um, he's still standing and he's living, so the rest of you guys know you can make it. You're supposed to go over there. It'll be okay. So, yes, uh, Rob introduced so, us. Good morning so. and happy Sabbath, <laughs> as well as the online community, right? So, uh, thank you, Yuri. I appreciate you being willing to sing that song and just that's a very that, heartwarming. That beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Amaya, thank you for sharing Rob's text that he wanted for today. Um, I, I also. i to say something about those three kids. Oh. When those three kids came and helped their mom serve at that luncheon, it just melted my heart. It did. It did. Yeah. So um, I wanted to uh, just thank our sister church, Rancho Cordova, where Yuri attends um, mostly. And uh, Elder Linton, are you here? Okay, I can't see, but I saw a hand, so good. Not only did they embrace the program, but they just graciously welcomed us to park this big 18-wheeler on their premises, keep it there for four weeks, and to use their facilities. That included their um, hall that we had the classrooms uh, program in and the lunches. And the graduation. And like Dijon said, graduation, you'll see some more pictures of that in a minute. So thank you to Rancho Cordova Church and Elder Linton for um, bringing us together. Uh, I want to also say that from uh, Rancho Cordova, I met my other sister, Sister Joan, you're online, and yeah, I'm looking at you. So she's a nurse, and she couldn't make it. That's Yuri's wife, and thank you. She will be the one who uh, created the video we'll see in a minute, and many other videos, resumes, help with all everything that went along. So uh, thank you, Joan. One other um, couple we'd like to uh, acknowledge is Jay and Maggie Drager. And somewhere in Hawaii, Maggie's laying with her feet up in the sand or something. So thank you, Maggie. And uh, they have been with us since the beginning and we're kind of like our board, the four of us. And her, her husband, Jay, Dr. Jay was with us yesterday as we did the interviews for this upcoming cohort. And we had almost 100 people to start out, we had to neck it down to 48 that said they would show up yesterday for interviews. How many, how many ultimately showed up? 26. So we now have 18 registered. Okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll say a little bit we'll more, say about more about the need that. for prayer. But um, when Elder Pam, she called and said, uh, there's an opportunity I'd like to give to you guys to share about the program. And she said, could you tell us what it is, what it does, and what comes becomes of it? Because a lot of you have been supporters through prayer, through participating, and of course, the first thing, I was scared, but then I'm thinking, why do I need to be scared? I get to share what God's doing. So, what, what, that, so that's what we're going to do this morning. So what is Reignite Hope? And uh, guys over there, if you want to slide in, I don't know if you can see the video, but this is going to be of your mugs. So, uh, <laughs> And some of yours, so don't laugh, Cyprian. No. <laughs> uh, so at that... Since Rob and I think a picture is worth a thousand words, we're going to go ahead and watch this video that will tell us not only what Reignite Hope is, but it also expresses our gratitude and appreciation for our church family. So if a picture is worth a thousand words, how many is a, is a video worth? I don't know. I mean, escort you down here.
So and we're trying to address the whole person. You know, we're trying to love on these men. Bringing metal work training to the capital city, Reunite Hope Sacramento has an 18-wheeler train students for weeks long in Berlin. Within the trailer, there are eight welding booths. Inside the booths, students get hands-on experience. The first class is a small, a small one just for four students, but organizers say it is open to people from all walks of life. Some people maybe made some bad decisions in the past. Maybe people are very unhappy in their circumstances and need to make a change. So and we're trying to address the whole person. You know, we're trying to love on these men, and this part of the program is also open for women and veterans. Each course is four weeks long. Program leaders say most graduates have at least one American Welding Society certification by the time they complete the course. Just a little while longer, we wanna pray. Can get you off of my soul, can to say thank you, Lord, just for loving me. All right. Many times I do forget every need that you have met. Oh, thank you, Lord. I know you're showing me. Mm. You are there when I am down and out. You hold in me. Your love is so amazing. Oh, it changed me. Here I am. Here I am. 
Well, that brought some tears to my eyes. Thank you, Joan, once again. Thank you, Jesse. Jesse, raise your hand. That is Yuri's son. He did a lot of the pictures that, and interviews that you see in the video. Yeah, that was so. his voice asking the guys the questions. <laughs> so thank you. All right, so um, you see the video, and here's all these guys at the program, but they don't just show up at the site one morning. There's a lot that goes into it. And briefly, I want to mention, is Gerald here? And I know Jail is not. Hey, Gerald. Gerald. Um, he was there yesterday, and he was part of an experience. The, um, it, it brings us to really before God, because it's very difficult. I'm glad I don't have to do it. I cop out, and I let six other people decide who's going to get into the program and who's not out of all these applicants. And it truly is God's decision. And um, I'm just going to ask right now for all of us to pray for the upcoming class. Um, each class has its own unique personalities. This class will have a lot higher risk. I'll just say that. And uh, we would really like it. And uh, I will talk about prayers in a moment. So if we went with our own biases, we'd probably have no students. <laughs> we'd probably say, none of you guys qualify. <laughs> And it's an inverted grading system. So the worse shape they're in, the more need they have, the higher they score. So at any rate, so this is, the, this is the segment about what Reignite Hope does. And one of the big things in the program, it's a faith-based program. So right from the start, you guys might have noticed uh, John 3.16 uh, on, a, on a poster board on a tripod in the classroom. That's our foundational text. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth will not perish, but be saved. Now, why is that an important text? Because those words are right out of the mouth of Jesus, and it really distills the gospel right down to its basic core, which is Jesus died to save us. And so they, those guys hear that the whole time. Am I right? Yeah. So we... Uh, it, it also gives us the opportunity to demonstrate uh, to the guys and the gals that are there that they're valued, both by us and by Jesus, whether it's the math program or the welding and the welding trailer or just instilling the confidence for them to know that they can uh, uh, finish this class and finish it well and come out with the welding certificate is a way of demonstrating to them that Jesus is there, we are there, and people praying for them are they're, there. They're supported. And speaking of prayer, they do know they are prayed for, and they are prayed with, and they're also given an opportunity to pray. And that comes from uh, the very start when the wonderful meals like uh, Dijon mentioned come. We are grateful. They've been welding all day, and they come in pretty hungry, and some of them haven't eaten breakfast. So the, the biggest thing we want to do is to show gratitude to God for providing those meals. Some of the guys have done a blessing before, some haven't. But what we do is that um, we ask one of the guys to bless the food, and of course the first few days you guys are all looking at each other like you're Martians or something, and everybody's got their protectors around them. So that's very intimidating. But not once has anybody said, no, I'm not going to do it. Everybody's always said yes. Well, we have had people that say, not yet. Yet, yes. By the end yet. of the program, they did it. They did it. That's correct. And about week two, they've become comfortable with each other. And they have really enjoyed the food. And so not only do they say yes, but they come volunteering to do it. I'm not sure whether they really want to pray or if it's because they get to go to the front of the lunch line that they're... And one guy was Could like... Could be a little both. One guy was always ready to pray, so... Uh. So, you know, not just uh, having these guys there for four weeks, just uh, on general educational things, just trying to kind of get them some life skills. That's part of it. Obviously, you guys have heard about welding. It's a welding program, right? It's a Jesus-centered welding program. But we can't just talk about those two items. We gotta give these guys some uh, practical skills, some expectations from employers, what, what's happening on the job site. 
what's expected of them when they graduate and they actually go out to get a job. And these guys will probably tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. But we've got to teach them some basic safety so they don't get injured. Uh, we talk about job site protocol again. Uh, weld joints and welding symbols. That's the welder shorthand. You professional people out here, you've, everybody's got their own little language and things, how they communicate. So these welders need to know a little bit of basic blueprint reading and welding symbols, the five basic weld joints and the multitude of welds that go into those. Uh, when these guys leave, uh, Debbie and I came up with the four Ps, and we stress this. Punctuality, preparedness, participatory, and a positive attitude. You know, if somebody's got a positive attitude, we could conquer the world. We came across an interesting stat we wanted to share with you guys. This is from uh, uh, an organization called Prison to Employment, P2E, the, the number two. And it said that formerly incarcerated persons who maintained employment for one year post-release from prison had only a 16% recidivism rate over three years as compared to a 52% recidivism rate for those who did not maintain employment. That's a pretty startling statistic right there. So would you say it's worthwhile to invest in these guys and get them employed? Absolutely. And as we mentioned, uh, it is a safe space uh, for them to just be themselves and we hope that they soon learn that. But I think so because I think most of these guys could pull up at least about another 10 guys whether that was in your class or another class that they text with, they talk to and keep in touch with and encourage each other. So that is something that's just beautiful to see. And to facilitate what Rob was saying about uh, jobs, we, we have a motto, jobs and Jesus. So I don't know whether Rob, well, I do know Rob's gonna go with Jesus every time, but his welding is pretty close second. These guys can talk welding all day long, and I'm like, okay, have fun. So yeah, Just a little aside, we had, this, we had this men's Bible study at my house. We started several years ago, and there was one guy down the street that was not a welder, and everybody else in the class was welders. So as soon as we started uh, talking welding stuff, he would always go, oh, there you go again, welder speak, I'm out. <laughs> you check out. Okay, so uh, let's not get ahead. Getting, okay, okay, that's okay. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> He's helping me, that's okay. So to, to facilitate both jobs and Jesus, we at graduation provide a gift bag and a file folder. And in the file folder are the things that are really gonna be helpful for their jobs. So they have an updated um, resume that has their new certificates made. So after graduation at three o'clock and we know they've passed, we have until five o'clock that night to get that in there and to make their um, uh, temporary uh, welding cert card. But we get them both in there. They get a diploma for completing the class. They come nine to five uh, for four weeks, Monday through Friday. And um, they also join the American Welding Society during the course of the time. And so this file folder also includes three pages of potential employers where they can apply and so that's the file folder part. We also have a gift bag for them and everything doesn't fit in the gift bag, but we'll start with, obviously we have. You guys recognize this? Okay, okay. this is actually Luke's Bible. He leaves it in my house. So he doesn't <laughs> forget it when he comes to Bible study. All right, so there's a Bible and we also have. Steps to Christ. Steps, a beautiful story, beautiful. So we have some of those still. And we have this little thing. What is this? Can anybody see it to tell me? Tape measures. What do you guys think about this? Most of these guys have seen them before. But a lot of uh, students need uh, a little extra time to learn this. So Becky and Doreen and Dick, they are there to teach these kinds of skills. So we'll talk just about that in a minute. So tape measure goes in the gift bag, steps to Christ, a Bible. This bag is getting a little heavy. And if we're fortunate, we try to get welding hoods donated for every student upon graduation. Mm -hmm. Because the welding hoods they use during the, during the course belong to Reignite Hope and stay with the trailer. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But there's also something else in there, I think. That's it. That's a wrap. Hmm. Well, what I will say is that 
We should talk about yeah. stickers. I'm talking about stickers, and these are really boring ones. But these guys can really get their helmets looking pretty cool. So. Yeah, welders, as well as construction workers in general, love to put hard hat stickers on their welding helmets, their hard hats, kind of a sign of experience. The more experience, the more stickers you have on your, on your helmet, right? So uh, they get to uh, leave the program with these items, but we have a slide that we're going to put up here that's going to show ways that you can participate. Um, let's see, well, there we go. First and foremost, we're going to talk about prayer. And is Lisa Emanuel here? She okay, right see that? Well, keep your hand up, Lisa. She's back there. You're going to want to talk to Lisa if you want to be part of the prayer group. And uh, I will leave it up to you guys whether you want to pray for one student, uh, two students, or the whole group. She's got the actual list of the students that are enrolled in this class Hold coming your up. list up. And so not we, just generic prayers. They're specific for names, these guys. Names, Okay, so she, she has names, and uh, we would really appreciate people uh, signing up for prayers. Meals, thank you for everybody that's so generous. And I'm going to have Celeste raise her hand. If you want to help with the meals in some fashion, she'll be who you talk to. However, thankfully, we almost have the uh, four weeks taken care of. Men's ministry is going to try to take care of Fridays. Thursdays, we have another church that takes care of that. Wednesdays, Rancho Cordova ladies take care of. Mondays are pretty much scheduled. So a few openings on Tuesday, and you can always come and help serve. I would always appreciate that. Yeah, and in the history of the course that over the last year, this is our fifth cohort. These guys have never had to fix one meal. So I'm gonna give everybody in the church a hand for that. Yeah. Because the biggest, the biggest support came from our church right here. I'm going to talk about graduation briefly, but I just want to highlight what Dijon said. You heard him say how his family was there. They saw him receive the diploma. They saw him acknowledged for the work that he had put in and the success he had. So graduation, we like to make it very special. Unfortunately, we don't have a coordinator for this graduation. But fortunately, we have somebody will help you. Uh, Jayla's not here, but she said she'd be happy to work with somebody on what the needs are. Of course, I will too. So if you would be willing to, that's your cup of tea or whatever you want to call it, please talk to me. We need somebody that will help us do the uh, foo-foo things and make it look pretty. The guys know that's not me. Okay, enough that. said. And then, um, oh, just a minute. Resumes, we can use help with that. And then as you saw, Joan does all the videos. So if somebody wants to do that, um, assist with that help. But mostly over here on the orange side, we don't have any Bibles to give. That, that's a sad thing to say. I'd like to say, let's get some Bibles to give. That's, that's, what, that's where we want to go. And welding hoods and boots, they are, they, they're a must. When they graduate and they want to go for a job interview, they need a welding hood. And, um, that's, and, they, and they have to have the boots to be in the course. Mm -hmm. They can't show up in flip-flops or tennis shoes, mm -hmm. athletic shoes. They, we have to have leather boots. Usually about four out of the class we need to get some boots. And we have a big five close to us that helps us with the cost of them. And we always find something that works. So that's a great thing. So if you would like to help in that area, you can use your tithe envelope and just write Reignite Hope and uh, put the amount and um, our uh, treasurer, Dave Jewett, will make sure that's taken care of. So the next thing, while well, Rob is uh, getting the guys up here. You guys are probably tired of hearing us ramble on, so we're gonna, we're gonna bring the all-stars up here. Yeah, so. Why don't you guys come on up here? While he's getting them ready with the microphone, this is the part where, well, what does it yield up? And you've already heard Dijon share and uh, Jacob and Luke, and what happened to Frank? Frank bailed. <laughs> I my, think scared one off. My Frank bailed. All right, so uh, come on up, William and Jesse. No? If you like to, sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, William uh, was with all the guys that applied yesterday, so. 
Um, I want to I want to say you get those two too close. Um, uh, yeah. So I wanted to. I can to, also I can uh, also talk of that off this mat no, if it's, stay it's better. Stay close to them. Though. Okay. So um, now we're down to two. So thank you guys for for doing this. But I, I want to say we can share one or two real brief things about what we, we see in the guys, but we're gonna let them share what they've seen. And the confidence and the change and the desire to leave the past in the past is, is just phenomenal. And uh, I have Frank's permission. He had dental work done and um, he's in a lot of pain, but he gave me permission to share that if you saw the one guy up on the iron in the video, that was Frank. And uh, Frank, one day in class, he just looked back at me and he said, I'm not going back to those white floor walls. I'm not going back. I knew he was struggling with remembering what he went through. I said, Frank, you're doing good. You're doing good. You'll be just fine. He didn't have the easiest time getting a job because his resume didn't look the most sterling, didn't have high school on it. And uh, Rob and I were like, how are, we, how are we gonna help him? We prayed and the Lord directed us to this one particular uh, employer. We asked for a, a, a seating with her. We explained the situation. Frank was hired and now you see him up on the iron. And along with that, Frank has done a beautiful job with his wife, Sylvia, in using the tools and information he's gained from some parenting classes to raise his son, Luciano, and they have been able to move from what wasn't the safest environment to a better home. They have their own home now where they're renting, and so uh, I'm just so thankful for the blessings that uh, Frank has had, and I know he's, uh, he would have shared this if he wasn't in pain, and he did make it. So, anyways, I'm going to let... So I'd like to introduce you guys Here. to... Matt's got maybe. some for you. Different? Uh, the blue one's acting. Thank you. Hello? I'd like to introduce you guys to Jacob and Luke. These are a couple of my favorite students, and when I asked them if they'd come and give a brief testimony about their experience and their perspectives on Reignite Hope, no hesitation. They said, yep, we'll be there. And I followed up with a couple of text messages and stuff, and every time, yep, still on track. So I came up with just a couple of questions to ask them just in case they got up here and couldn't think what they wanted to say about the, about the program. So which one of you guys would like to start? I'll go ahead first. Okay, Jacob, you want me to read the question? Then you can answer. He typed them up. I sent him a text message. Uh, Jacob, what were you expecting when you signed up for Read Night Hope? Uh, I was hoping for a new direction in life. I wanted to learn a skilled trade, and I always wanted to be the person that can help the community and be productive. And this is a guy that always asks questions. When, some, when a student is asking questions, they're learning. They want, they want more answers. Give them more. Uh, what, was it different than you imagined? I was happy that it was exactly as I had imagined. I learned a trade that will have a lot of possibilities and be able to provide for me. I am very thankful of this opportunity. This isn't on the script, but are you gainfully employed right now? Yes, I am. This guy got the best job of any of them. Tell me what you're doing, baby. I got a job at Alltech. I am welding the units that go up in the air for PG&E and SMUD. So that's what I do, and it's very awesome. He, he was a little bit nervous about his skills because it, it, it had been a while before he went in for the interview. And for a welder, the interview consists of a, taking a welding test. They take a quick look at your paper and say, oh, that's great, get, get your hood, let's go to the shop, show us what you got. And so he came to uh, the Reignite Hope program that we had, we had a class running at that time. And he came in and uh, worked with a couple of instructors, just tuned up a little bit, give him a little confidence. And he went out and nailed it. And so he did, he got the best job of the bunch. So just to clarify, he was in a previous class, so yes. he, he it had been a while, that's why, and so he came yeah. and joined the other class, yeah. So what is your favorite experience or memory from the program? Um, my favorite experience was getting to work with Robin, Rob and Debbie. They are truly committed and inspiring to everyone. All of the instructors were awesome and they helped me to be a better 
welder. We paid him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and what challenged you the most in the program? Uh, I looked forward to going to class, and I liked the challenge of learning the welding techniques. It has always allowed me to move forward in my career with Alltech. I'm very thankful for what this program has provided me. And what was the most rewarding aspect of the program? I learned a skilled trade that I am, I am able to provide for myself and my family. This has truly been a blessing, and a, once again, a special thanks to Rob and Debbie and all of you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> all right, Luke. Do you want to free form it? I'll free, I'll free style it. Okay, I got to say something about this guy. Yes, sir. I call him Dr. Luke, <laughs> right? But Luke is a guy that if he says he's going to do something, you can take it to the bank. He is gonna, he's going to do it. We had a Bible study, and we, Pastor Blake encouraged us, well, you know, why don't you feed these guys? They come over to your house for Bible study, why don't you feed them? And prior to that, we had always had water and maybe some snacks. And uh, so we thought, well, let's do, a, let's, let's do a big spaghetti feed. And Luke says, my wife will make it, I'll bring it, I'll be there. Sure enough, he brought enough for about 40 people, you know? <laughs> but he's just that kind of guy. And I really enjoyed having him in the program, and he'll tell you about his employment. But uh, he, he had some bumps in the road in the past. Whether he shares those or not, doesn't matter. But he showed up at Reignite Hope with an attitude that he wanted to learn something new. And he was one of the top students in the program. He's always on top of everything. Early for class, stayed to the last minute, willing to help other students if they needed it, ask questions when it was appropriate. So take, it, take it away, Lou. Yes, sir. <laughs> Reignite Hope. I mean, th this is the best program out there. There's none other from CDRC or any rehab that does what you guys do. Literally, you guys are number one. I mean, I, I, I caught a little case, and then I came out, I couldn't get a job anyway, because I was felon, right? So everybody I knew that owned restaurants, owned whatever it is, no one would hire me. So my son, he's, he's a doctor now, he said, this is a program that Reignite Hope, give it a try, give them a call, they get you on, you might be able to learn something, start something new. So I went through with it. I went to the interview, said, give me a shot, because I really I don't, I can't get a job anywhere. No one was hiring. Even when I got finished with Reignite Hope, me and you went to an interview, I still couldn't get hired, right? Yeah. Uh, and now, finally, I got hired on with a job. I mean, without Reignite Hope and the program it does, I wouldn't have that courage to go out and apply for a job. Yeah, thank you. That's keeping it real. I could say this. I could say this about Luke with his entrepreneurial spirit. He's going to be running that company about five years. I can tell you that. Yeah, we'll That's let, a big company. We'll let him tell about that now. Tell, sure. tell us about your job. So I'm working at Clark Pacific out in uh, Woodland now. This is one of their manufacturing plants. They have currently about 750 employees. They build the courthouse out here, the prefab it, uh, Stanford University, most of the buildings, Apple buildings. They build that. Google buildings. They they build all that there. So it's, it's a really big company to prefab everything in-house. I got on and they put me on what they call form setup. So as these big molds that's made of metal, we got to put anchor to the floor, level them, uh, fabricate a lot of holes and a lot of drilling and weldings on them. So I get my own schedule, which is they allow me to do 12, 12 hours a day, but I don't, I'll do about 10. That's a lot of hours already. <laughs> so it's really, it's really neat that the, there are companies out there that'll give these guys a second chance. You guys saw the slide up there. We all need a second chance, right? And these guys just kept saying, no, 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 no. And without this program, I wouldn't have the courage to be applying this job because everywhere I went, no one would even look at me or even give me a chance to even do anything with them. Well, you're rocking and rolling now. You guys are the man. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. 100 degree heat and you guys are out there. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, I hope we haven't used up too much of your valuable time. It's really neat to see, oh, it's really neat to see this many folks in church because I know a lot of the fifth through eighth graders are out on a backpacking trip, so I know there's a big contingent missing. So it's really special for us to, to have, have you guys here today. So just a couple of thoughts. Have you guys ever heard of uh, someone drowning and someone goes and saves them?
once that person has been saved, do you think they reach out to other people when they see someone drowning? You better believe it. 100%. Because of what Christ did for me in my life, I have a passion for these guys. And I think God directs me that way. So I'm sorry for losing in here. There's another text I want to share, and it uh, goes right on the heels of the other one. It's from Romans 5.8, and it says, But God demonstrates his love for us, and that he died for us while we were still sinners. He didn't say, get yourself cleaned up and then come and I'll take care of you. He came to us. We were sinners. We were hurting. I'm missing one card here. It's our final text. Here we go. They said the text earlier. It's a beautiful text. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you. That's a strong word. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. So we have God's blessings. We got his love. All he's asking us to do is say yes. What happens when we say yes? He puts us where he wants us to go to share his love and his blessings. So I challenge everybody in church today that does not have a channel to funnel that love, to think about the list that was up on the board. Uh, our church has a lot of other ministries. I don't know if we had a chance to discuss them all, the, the food pantry. Uh, did, did Debbie mention those to Pam? I'm, okay, I wasn't paying attention, sorry. But we have, we have a lot of ministries here that you can get involved in. Uh, any involvement you guys can have on this Reignite Hope course coming up would be tremendous. We would really appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you're going to connect with one of the volunteers, one of the leaders, one of the coordinators that they pointed out earlier? Oh, yes, we'll be in the foyer afterward. But uh, once again, you guys, it's just been a real pleasure to be here. So I think we'll go ahead and close with prayer. If you guys would bow your heads with me. Uh, I'm sorry, Celeste. No. I mean, if they wanted to go buy the stuff, that's fine. But it would be easier. It'd be easier if, if, if we selected what we know the guys need. But if someone knows their boots and their welding helmets and they, they have a burden to go purchase those on their own, that's, that's beautiful. Not a problem. Let's bow our heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this Sabbath day. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you that you direct our paths, Lord. When we get up out of bed in the morning, we don't have to wonder, what am I going to do today? What is the meaning of my life? Where am I going? You direct our paths. You are a good God. Lord, we praise your holy name. We lift you up on high. We pray for everyone in church here today and online. We pray that your days are sweet and that you draw close to Lord, the Lord. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you, guys.